Hi, my name's Rob Fisher. I'm the Director of Marketing at Syntelix. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Supercharge IBM i2 with Syntelix. So we have Ron Fitch presenting for us today. Ron has quite extensive experience with IBM and particularly the i2 product, having worked as an i2 trainer uh, before coming across to Syntelix this year. So he has a, a really good understanding of both sides and how they connect together and how you can supercharge IBM IT with Syntelix. Thank you, Aman. Um, as Rob said, I've had 20 years working with the I2 software, but the uh, therapy is working quite nicely now. Um, so just to recap as to what the intention is for today is we want to look at structured versus unstructured data and how we can manage Syntelex connections, networks, etc., from within I A and B and this notebook, how the two manage together. But the thing I want to pick up first on that sentence, though, is the word versus. It's not one against the other. It's they complement each other. And the big thing is I2 is very good with structured data. And we can bring that information in. But there is a lot of rich context within an unstructured data. So it's not we use one or the other. It's how we can bring them both together and work with them that way. We'll also look at the uh, analysis process of looking at our networks from within Analyst Notebook, how we can then use Syntelex to enrich that information and things to watch out for when you're doing that. So merging items, because we may well have duplication, which things I'll come back to as we go through the presentation. And looking at keeping that Syntelex connection for an item that you've added from our Syntelex database into our Analyst Notebook i2 chart and making sure that we can always reference back to Syntelex for that. And look at also how we can expand. So again, we not only have Analyst Notebook, IBM also have iBase as a database utility, and Syntelex can work in the very same way in that we can expand items that are linked and referenced within our collection and networks. And again, we'll look at referring back to the document. So a key thing on here is, from an end user's point of view, is being able to audit what they're doing and saying, I've drawn this chart because of, and here's the reason why. So here's the document that supports that information, etc. So let's start at the beginning and find Analyst Notebook. So in Analyst Notebook, um, we know that we can manually draw charts, etc., which is a very time consuming experience. So the big thing, again, from an end user point of view, is to get actionable intelligence as quickly as possible out of their data sources. So in terms of Analyst Notebook, that means importing information. So typically, here's an Excel spreadsheet where we have structured data. So we've got a set of telephone calls here at the top, but we also have SMS messages sitting in here. So again, that's free text. So we'll see in a moment. I too can bring in the fact that there is a SMS message going between two phones. But from an analytical point of view is what is the content of that message? And again, just moving down our spreadsheet again, just to highlight the power that I2 has in itself, is we have a mixture of telephone calls, transactions, people that hold accounts, people where they live, etc. So I2 can hold these, again, structured files held, holding lots of information, and we can use that to create our visualization. And obviously, we do that by opening up our importer. Uh, let's just close some of these windows so we can see what's going on. And I just very quickly edit. Uh, so select my data file. So here's our information. trips me up every time. Remember to close Excel because it's greedy. So here's our information 
in I2. And again, I2 allows us to do powerful things. So we have direction here, A to B. As I move through my import specification, we can see that we've done some column actions on here to actually say from the software's point of view, this is the code for direction. This is how I want to visualize the information. So my entity A becomes this item. My entity B becomes this item. We have the type being picked up from the entity A type column up here, etc. So again, we can do lots of things within this. And if I just import that specification, we can very quickly get that data into a chart. And if I swap to one that I prepared earlier, we start to get this view of our information. So to give this some sort of context, which I'll just loosely hang around to show the techniques that we want to look at here is we have a situation where we have an attempt to build a dirty bomb by these characters over here. But as with most investigations, we've looked at that network cell and we thought, well, they're the ones involved in it. Who are the ones running it? And moving out from here, we sort of built up a trail and the element of the chart that I want to focus on for this is this element over here where we have two characters who appear to be calling each other. They have transactions going on and then that's feeding into the rest of our investigation. So again, we've talked about there's SMS messages within here and we can actually use this information further. So rather than focus on this main chart, I'm going to copy that subsection, generate a new chart, paste the information in so we can see what's going on. So we can see our two characters here. We've got a Jose Padilla and an Abu Zabadea. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, OK, we've got Syntelex as well. Um, How is this working? So I'm going to log into Syntelex. And we see that we've got the projects that we're working on that we can look at. So if I come to I2 demo and open that up, the plugin immediately swaps the network and it says select network, which is currently empty. So again, the big thing behind this is when we're using Syntelex and Analyst Notebook together is that we need a network in place. So if I just swap to my Syntelex project, so here we are on the, the main page and we go to networks. We see that we have no network in place. So I'm just going to quickly create oops, a demo based on my collection. So we've gone out and done some research on the BBC and pulled in some data from there. And that should now allow me to create that information. So I've got my network view here and I can see within this, there's an awful lot of rich information. I've got one and a half thousand people, nearly 700 organizations, nearly a thousand locations, etc. So I've got lots of information in here that I can actually use. But if I swap back to Analyst Notebook now, we can now see that my I2 demo is here. So again, it's that big point of we need networks in place. So it's this idea of managing information. So again, we can work on these networks. I'm going to play around with this as I work through this presentation. And just close the import so I'm done with that. So I've got my chart here. And as Jose Padilla is a person that I'm going to focus on in a moment, again, whoops, just remember that we can use the I2 technology to say, well, OK, he's a guy I'm interested in, so I'd like to highlight him. So I am going to go to the Star tab, select Jose. And I'm just going to drop a frame around him so I know I'm working with him. And likewise, Abu, I can then say I'd like to work with him and highlight him accordingly. 
So the nice idea is using I2 functionality to remind myself how I'm working along with Syntelex. So looking at our content analytics panel down here where we've actually logged into Syntelex, um, one of the things we should always remember is if in doubt, the help tab is always there and there is good online help to actually help how we can actually work our way through here if we get stuck. We also have collections. So again, we know that we've got our BBC collection here, but we can also actually create collections as well. So if I choose my character here and I'm just going to copy his name. So I'm going to create this collection, just call on him. And again, investigation configuration, so default and network update. So one of the advantages we have with one of the recent Syntelex enhancements is that we now get an automatic network update when we create a collection. So I can create this collection and we see that it opens up this area here where we can drag and drop documents or click here to select files. So again, to speed things up. So basically what I've got here is um, having done some research already, I've got a profile document on here. I can just drop that information into there. And clicking around to finish it, we can see we've got the information on there and we can build up collections here. So again, working with I2, we get the idea that we can build up a chart and despite all claims to the contrary, there is very seldom a silver bullet in our analytical cycle. We're hoping for the yes, this is the answer, but very often it will raise more questions. So as part of this cycle is we've done our investigation, we've identified these two people. We then go back into our investigation cycle. We want a new collection plan. We can then feed documents into that collection, et cetera. And Syntelex working alongside I2 enables us to do that. So we built up a collection there. Again, if I come back to my network, we now see that we've actually also got a network from that collection that I've just dropped in. So we can manage networks and collections from within I2 and work with information that way. So the other thing I want to look at on here is my character here, Jose Padilla. So again, if I come back to my first collection and we can see that we've got the node types in here. So if we've played around this before, we'll know that we can actually use this as a filter. So if I look at my people and I've already pointed out and it says down the bottom, we've got 1,514 people in here and I've got 76 pages to wade through to try and find any reference to Jose in order to see if he's mentioned within those documents. So again, there is an element where not everything will be done from within I2. We may swap to Syntelex. So in Syntelex, I can do a search. So again, just to remind you of Syntelex, functionality. We have multiple collections now in our project. We can choose that we want to search across all of them or we can be quite specific. So again, where we're looking for information. So it's this idea of are we looking strategically, i.e. across everything that we know, or are we looking tactically at a specific data set to try and find information that we're interested in? So let me just clear the search I was doing earlier on there and add a new one in here. So I'm looking for Jose Padilla. And again, I don't trust my spelling, so just using the software to help me. I can copy information to make sure that I'm looking for what I hold in Analyst Notebook. And I can just run a search on there. So it tells me it's found four documents. It's referring to Jose Padilla in this information. 
And again, what we can do here is bearing in mind what I was just saying about the fact that we need a network in order to be able to chart information into Anlis Notebook. Remember that from a search, I can create a collection based on this, but I can also create a network. So we'll call this Network Him. Now we can go to Network. So at this stage, we can look at this information within Syntelex itself and use Syntelex's own intelligence and analytical capabilities. But again, if we're using that in conjunction with Analyst Notebook and we want to see if we can enrich this picture accordingly, if I now swap to my network for Jose, I just want to see the people. So you can see that I've got three pages now instead of the 70 odd that I had before. Remember that we can click on the column headings here. So if I'm interested in the most referenced people, I can click on the documents they refer to in here, or I can click on the nodes to do a sort. And let's see, I believe he's on page two. So we come down and we see that we've got our characters down here. And again, at this stage, until we go in and teach Syntelex more about this. We've got a bit of duplication on here, but again, we can still go in and we can say, I'd like to add these items to the Anlis Notebook chart. And it appears over on the chart area here that nothing's happened. But if I do a fit chart in window, I actually click in my chart and do a fit chart in window, we can see that our characters have appeared over here. I can bring these down accordingly, bring them into context on area here. And again, if I'm using the toolbar buttons on here, I can use this to do fit to window or the keyboard shortcuts. So I've got these characters. And in terms of having mentioned iBase and databases, so with most software packages these days is, if in doubt, right mouse click. So if I right click on one of these items, so we can see that we've got the analyst notebook items on here. So I can look at the item properties for this. So we see that this is coming from Syntelex. That's the label that we're seeing on our chart. Currently, there's no cards. And if we look at our attributes, which we can see underneath here, the information has been split out into that attribute way of looking at first name, last name, gender, etc. for us. But importantly on there is that we have our Syntelex link. And we can choose to expand, expand and link, expand with settings. So again, expand with settings gives us as an analyst control rather than just getting overwhelmed with information. So we're trying to pin this down and find out what we're looking at. We can actually add what we're interested in. So if I'm interested in just people that are connected to this people, person, I can click on OK and it brings that information in. So if we repeat the process and we got our second Jose here. So again, I'll do an expand with settings just to highlight the fact that Syntelex here is remembering what we're doing. So we don't have to reset everything every time. If I know that I'm looking up my people, first of all, I can then just go ahead and OK that. And this is expected. As with any database, if there are no people connected to the item, the software will come back and tell me. So this guy's not connected to any people. And we'll look at our last one on here. And we can expand to person on there. And again, that item's not got anything on there as well. So again, it's just looking at this information and not only adding what we're interested in. So if I just bring our two people in that we're interested in here and zoom in again. So what we have at this stage is this ability to go back to our Syntelex network, expand, start building up the picture and bearing in mind that I was saying as part of my introduction, we want uh, an audit trail almost, if you will, as to how we're looking at information. So 
we can show documents. So for the item I've got highlighted here, it'll then highlight the document or documents that he's referenced in, and we can use that information. Sorry to pause there, I noticed there was a chat question popped up. So again, if you have questions at any point, by all means, join the chat and drop them in there. So back into what we're trying to do with our characters here. And you'll notice that as I change my selection on my analyst notebook chart over on the left hand side here, the screen is reflecting to show the documents that these guys are reflected in. And this guy was reflected in two documents and we've got the information shown accordingly on there. Now, there are a couple of ways and things that we need to bear in mind on this. We have this duplication, and I did my expands first of all. And it's a good thing to do that. So rather than think, oh, I've got this duplication, I want to just collapse them down and then do my expands, it's better to do your expands first and then come in. And this is something I've actually in the past recommended with I2, even if I'm importing information. Having created my chart here, I build up my imports, then I look for duplication rather than doing it piecemeal and merging everything into one to start with. And you'll see why for that in a moment. So I've got duplication on here. Uh, it's a small chart and it's fairly obvious what I'm doing. I want these guys, they're all the same person as far as I'm concerned as I've read, read through this, but how can I manage that information? So one of the things that we can do is I can maintain them as separate entities. And I think I just want to keep these guys together. And having selected them, if I right click on them in Anders Notebook, we have the option to group them. So it creates a group of these items. So if I do move things around, they all move together. So I've got the idea of grouping them that way. Let's ungroup them for a moment. The other way, though, is what if it's a larger chart? I've got a lot of information here, and I haven't just been able to add five items into my visualization here. I've actually added 50 or 5,000, and that's relevant to what I'm trying to do. How do I find duplication on here? So within and this notebook itself, we have a useful tool called Find Matching Entities. And Find Matching Entities is really quite useful in terms of looking for duplication. And the thing to be aware of on here is, depending on how you want to do this, we have this thing called Smart Matching, which is what I'll come back to and use in a moment. But it uses things like the attributes etc that have been brought across the entity types that have been used and the things that they're connected to to look for a positive match and it's also quite good with anglo-american names in that i introduce myself as ron my given name is actually ronald and it knows that ron ronald ronnie are all variations of the same name so it will do that sort of matching for us so depending on our data, that may help us. But another way in which we can search is that we can do something called label matching. And if I go into setup for label matching, so depending on our data, we may have situations where the use of attributes, the use of the smart features may not be relevant. We just want to do a comparison of labels that are appearing on our chart. So label matching. First thing on here, if you're using this, reset. So if it's a brand new search that we're doing, reset puts us back to a very beginning and it stops us forgetting that a setting that we would applied earlier and messing up our search. And the way to think about this is it's a quite a strict search to start with. So it's looking for every character. So match on all characters. And if I OK that and do a find, being quite strict, it finds nothing. So we can loosen it up. So if we think of these radio buttons here of relaxing the search, so only look at letters and digits. 
letters only, digits only. So in terms of telephone numbers, account numbers, we might be interested in digits. Or we can say, ignore this and use everything else. So if I said letters on here, we can also use all identifiers, so labels and identifiers, uh, identities as used by Anis Notebook. And we can also say, well, okay, they must be the same entity type as well. So again, if we know that we're importing information and our configurations within Syntelex are bringing across them all as the same icon type, that's quite good for us as well. If I okay that and do my find here, so here we have our visualization down here that shows us this is what it thinks is as a match. But again, it's not ideal in this case because it's matching on the labels and I've relaxed it perhaps too much. So it's pulling up lots of duplication on here. So I'm going to go back to smart matching on this, go back to my setup. So we have our sliding scale on here. So again, on reset. And remember that IBM i2's smart matching principle tries to maintain that it's never a 100% match. So we only stop at a scale of nine to indicate that there is still an indication of doubt. But we can actually bring this down. And again, it's relaxing the search. So it's being allowing more features to be brought in to sync what is a duplicate. So if I OK that and do a find. So now we see that it's got a match and it's finding two Abu Zabadayas on here. And our screen at the bottom here for our fine matching entities, our little chart down here, interacts with our upper chart as well. So if I come back up here, so when I select something, it moves it to the middle of the screen and it moves around. So it shows me in context. So the nice thing about using this is, again, you've arranged your chart already. You've actually worked with Analyst Notebook. You've got things in context. And when you start looking at potential duplicates, you start to say, well, OK, these might be of interest to me. And the way it works is it's found a set for Abu Zabadiah and it's found a set for Jose Padilla. And the other thing, just to bear in mind what I was saying, that from I2's point of view, it's saying that it doesn't think it's a perfect match in that our link lines, and again, my apologies, you probably know this with Analyst Notebook, but the line here is dotted on a match to indicate that it's a tentative link. So in terms of our reliability on our chart, this is simply highlighting the fact that the software thinks these are the same. So if we look around here, we can see that we've got these characters and they've all got a match of six. And the link will tell us on the card that the full name got a fairly high rating on this. The gender was used, but it neither contributed nor added to the score, hence the little wavy line beside it. And you'll often find, although you have gender, the software tends to look at it, but doesn't put that emphasis on it. For example, you may have two Sam Norrises on your chart, but is it a Samuel and a Samantha? The software doesn't know that, even though you've drawn them both as males or both as females, it will allow for that name being cross gender specific, etc. So anything like that, it will say, OK, you may have made a mistake. And the other thing to bear in mind on here is this is as a guide um, how these pluses, etc. build up. Even the I2 developers have admitted it's so complicated. Don't try and relate that back to the score of six that comes on the link. But we have the idea here. We've got our items of interest and what we actually want to do with them is to actually create one master record. So before I do that, I'm just going to do something up here. So I've got this chart, got the items I'm interested in. Just going to copy them and create a new chart and paste them in there. So I'm going to come back to that in a moment. So back into my 
matching. I've got the information here. And again, it's how you want to work with your data. So the software is saying, I think these are all potential matches. And as you click on an item in this hypothetical view down here, which is what the software is saying, this is my subchart, and I think these are all the same thing, the item you click on becomes enlarged to highlight the fact that that's the emphasis, but it's also how we're going to work with the information. If we decide that we want to merge these items together, the largest item is the one that will be kept. So that's how it's working. So if I was to select everything else from this point on, everything will be merged into that particular record. Before I do that, though, the other option we have, and we've got these buttons down here, so I've got my select all. And you'll notice that that now actually indicates that we can link the items together. So for our investigative process, we may want to highlight the fact that we have these people that are separate, but we think they're the same and we just want to link them. In fact, if I use that link, you'll then see in my charts at the top here, we have that information shown. If I zoom in on there, we have this dotted line brought in to say, we think these characters are the same. Let's just ungroup those. The other way of working that though is we're using the software as an aid here. And as much as I love software, it's given me most of my working career a solid income. Nothing can beat the human analyst. So it's an aid to the human analyst. And that's what we're stressing on this is the fact that it's the person sitting in front of the software who can make a valid decision. And if it's our decision that, yes, these are all the same and I want to merge them together or perhaps just these three, I'm happy to merge into one item. I'm not too sure about that. I'll leave it separate. So, again, the user is in control on this. For this example, I'll say, yep. I'm happy with them, they're all connected, and we can then say I'd like to merge them, and it creates one master record within my chart. And the one I chose was the highlighted one, so it's the I2 item. So that's find matching entities very briefly, just as a way of looking for duplicates as you add things to your chart. So we said if we come back to our network, we may be finding that we're adding lots of information from here into our visualization and then doing expands. So we may have a lot of information to check through for duplication. And that's one way of solving that information. So if I come back to this, Jose, so the software is clever. Again, it's working as and this notebook would with iBase. It's just using Syntelex in the background as its database. So it knows that within this item, there are still Syntelex items sitting here. So I can actually do an expand with settings again. And this time I'm going to say I'd like to bring in all the documents. So it's only brought one document back in. But when we actually went through this and I was looking at the documents, there were four documents attached to those three Jose Padillas that we'd bought in. And this is only bringing back one. And at the beginning of this, I said it's best to do our expansions first. So if I come to this example here, so we went through and we said, we'll expand this one, we'll expand this one. Because what's actually happening is that when we do our merge, and it creates a master record, it doesn't know which Syntelex record you actually want to go down to and expand. This is something that we're actually flagging with the developers to see if there's a nice way we can work around this. But it's something to bear in mind in the meantime that your best practice work on this at the moment is to do an expand before you do your merge. So again, if I just prove this, um, just select him first. So again, remembering with Analyst Notebook, it's the item you select first. And we can then use our merge combine up here. So I can say merge those into him. I've still got Syntelex, expand with settings. 
So this time it's telling me no entities or links were added to the chart because one of those three Jose's was the one that wasn't connected to any people. And that's the first record it's hitting within here. Don't close the chart. And again, just to reiterate what's going on there, if I select this item and display the properties, so we can see here cards. So it knows that it's merged these items in and these are all the entities that made up that master record, if you like. But in terms of when we do an expand, it doesn't know whether it should be using that record or this record down here or this one, etc. It just uses the first one it's found that was merged into that information. So it's just something to be aware of that if you're doing this idea of creating a master record within your analyst notebook chart, do your expansions first, get the data in, then you can consolidate down. So we've looked at collections, we've looked at networks, we've looked at managing the information. I'm just going to refresh my memory. So we've added items from a network to an AMB chart. Again, it's fairly straightforward. We'll probably do that on a regular basis. It's just managing that information and noting the network that we're charting from. So again, one of these things to bear in mind with that is back in Andis Notebook is that when you're charting, if you have different networks, you will be charting from a particular network, not just everything. So it comes back to of how you're looking at the information. From a tactical point of view, we're looking specifically where we want to go. I might say I want to go back to the I2 demo, which is a network of everything with all my collections, etc., and pull in everything from there. So in terms of our options, again, depending on how you're working with Analyst Notebook, if I just zoom in on my character here. So back to options. So we talked about the fact that these items here come across as attributes. Do I actually want to see them? So show attributes. I can actually switch these on or off as I bring in information. I can show features. I can show cross links as well, etc. So again, it's how you actually want to work and show information in here. And attributes are a very useful thing in terms of when you're building up your network view in terms of then analyzing information, if you can pull information across. And again, what I've shown so far is purely out of the box. So once we start configuring Syntelex to show more information, we might want to show the occupation of this character. We might want to look at other information. We can include that as attributes on here to aid our use in Analyst Notebook. So the other side of just looking at this is if I swap us back into here. So again, it's this idea of building up information. So here I've got a link to just Wikipedia and information about a dirty bomb. So again, within Analyst Notebook on my master chart, our original focus on this was the fact that these characters look to be involved in building a dirty bomb and I want to find out more information about that. So again, it's this idea that and this notebook is fantastic at putting data together and giving us a jump start into asking further questions, adding more data for our investigation. So from here, we might want to find out more about dirty bombs or whatever it is we're looking at. So again, remember that with Syntelex in here, We've got information on here and we have our Syntelex Harvester button on our web page. So I can either add this URL to a store so I can actually go back later into Syntelex and say, OK, as part of my research, I'm looking at these various websites. Let's add them in and then harvest the information later. For this, I'll do a manual harvest. So again, we can choose our project. The rule set, again, Syntelex comes back. It actually knows in this case it's Wikipedia, so it'll have a rule set for that. And again, if we look at our drop-down list, so we have Google, DuckDuckGo, et cetera, 
Reddit, news, etc. So we can configure the software as well to look at specific websites. If it's Twitter, Facebook accounts, etc., that we're looking at, we can choose one more relevant. Collection. So again, as we showed before, this is a separate collection plan. So I'm going to create a new collection from that. And then using that rule set, we can get the information to harvest the information. I can then close that down. So if I come back into my chart, just to ram it home, all that's done is it's created a collection. I have no network at this stage. So I've done my research into my networks. So we'll create a new network called Dirty Bomb. Base it on the Dirty Bomb collection. I can create that information. Come back into Anders Notebook. We now have a network based on there. So again, it's this idea of using Anders Notebook as a way of we have a visualization. And as part of our investigative analysis cycle, it is often collect your data, evaluate your data. Syntelex helps with that. Chart and interpret your information. As you chart and interpret the information, that quite often leads on to a further set of questions. What do we know about dirty bombs? What do we know about money laundering, etc.? There may be information around that that will help us. So this all fits into that cycle quite nicely and allows us to work with the information. So one last thing on here. Uh, let me just swap back. Let's use Jose as it's the simplest one. So here I've got 45 nodes of information. Just to highlight and things to remind you on here, if I don't want to see three pages of information, I want to see all my people together. If I say 500 items, I've now got them all on one page. And again, if we're using Syntelex, we know that we can filter based on our label. We can filter based on tags, so we can sort the information as we require on here. So I talked about this earlier, and I said, okay, we could create networks from within collections, etc., and doing a search, but we can also export a network. So one of the things I just want to finish up on here, because I do have a tendency to run on, because I too can be such a wide subject is how do we get information out of Syntelex to use in something like iBase, etc. This is a two-stage process. It will create a text file or a zip file of the information. Um, if I just highlight as the software is fighting me at this stage or my laptop is. So it will create a zip file. I've actually already extracted that information for an iBase import. It creates these folders of entities, so all my people and also the links in here. So this is built up from the network. If I come back to entities and highlight my people, so there's the information. And we see it does it as a comma separated file. So we've got information about Syntelex, the case ID, the Syntelex entity ID. So 89, it's the case that these things are related to. So again, if you are working on different cases, you'll want to be able to identify in your database information like that. This makes the item unique within Syntelex. So again, if we want to go back and find that information, that's important to us. And then there's information about the label, tags, full name, last name, etc. And it's all comma separated. It's safer to do it this way because then if we're importing that information into Analyst Notebook or into iBase, we can then build an import specification that says how we want to build the information in. And with iBase, it's probably better to bring in the entities first, then the links to bring them together. So again, I can say on here that I want to bring in person. It's a text file. I can then choose my file. So remembering it's saying on here, 
I, I too defaults to a tab field delimiter. It was a comma actually in our case. So when I go next, it makes sense. So on here, if I just set it back to tab. So rule of thumb with iBase is if it never looks right on this page, go back and look at your field delimiter. And then we can start to say, well, okay, this is information that we want to map across accordingly to our database fields. So Hussan was his surname, four names. And then we have sex on there. And again, because it's a database, it'll highlight the fact that fields are mandatory, etc. And we'll also notice that on here we have our Syntelex UID as a field on there, so we can map that across, which I'll come back to in a moment on there. Again, we have control at this stage. We're bringing in the data that we want to enrich our intelligence database. iBase, in my opinion, is purely an intelligence database tool. It's not a replica of your whole data set. You want to pull out the actionable intelligence from there. And then we can start to say, well, okay, check for identifiers. What do you want to do if a match is found, et cetera? And then we can bring that information into iBase. So a final thought on there is things to consider in your database schema. So if I look at my account entity, it's got a Syntelex UID, case name, Syntelex UID, person, we've already seen it on Syntelex. And if I look at my links, it's got the same on here. So if we are taking data from Syntelex and dropping it into iBase, we want to have our schema managed in such a way that we can get this information in. And because that appears on every field, that's a standard field that we've just set up. And we could do a similar thing for the Syntelex case. So we'll create a new field. Syntelex case ID. What type of field is it? We can give it a description, etc. Discriminators, then these make them unique within iBase themselves. So again, it's what are we, in terms of our schema design, what are we using to say, okay, this is a single record. And again, it's the way that we want to map that is to say, well, okay, this is in iBase because it came from our Syntelex data collection. And when I okay that, successfully created, each of my fields now has a case ID that I can then map that information across to. So in terms of pulling information out of Syntelex, if it's in this notebook, we have the plugin. We can work quite nicely there. If I'm working with iBase, it's better to do this multi-file format export of our network and then we can then choose what it is again filtering down so we're not putting false positives into our data thank you ron and thanks to everyone who joined us on today's presentation appreciate your time if you'd like more information you can reach out to us via the website at syntelix.com we look forward to seeing you on the next one have a great day